Hello everyone, uh, this is Sean and this is part three of the toy room tour in my new apartment. I brought another shelf, as you'll see in a moment, but this is not the um, final part. That'll be part four, maybe possibly part five. Anyway, I'll take you into the room and show you what I brought today. So as you can see here, this is the newest addition to the toy room. It's a shelf I bought at uh, the Renfrew Flea Market. And this is my childhood Air Raiders collection, complete with their, all the little sheet catalogs that came with the, with the vehicles. You can see them all here. Oh, silly me, I forgot to alternate them. One second. There, there we go because I have five guides, so I had to alternate them for each one. And you can see the full guide here. Now what I have an idea of doing, since they never produced the air refinery, I thought I might try to build it with my constructs. We'll see if that works. Because if you put the two pieces that are curved together, they probably form circles. So anyway, that's that vehicle. And you have the two uh, Storm Dagger and I believe it's Wind Seeker down here. And you can see the uh, Eternia thing. You see how old it is. Some of it's not together. And there is the Dragon Wind. Well, that's the French side, actually. But there's, there's Dragon Wind on its shelf. This is uh, Twin Lightning on its shelf, and then there is the uh, Thunder Hammer on its shelf. And below them, you can see the box for Twin Lightning and the Air Raiders command base. Another thing I brought over today is the one uh, Captain Power figure I have, Lord Dread himself. I bought him as a carded figure at 80s Toy Con on October 3rd. Okay, and of course yeah, here you have the Origins He-Man. This is the one with the proper vintage style face. And then the Origins Skeletor. And almost, well, five years ago now, when Star Wars turned 40, I bought the five figures that I could. So you have Darth Vader, you have Obi-Wan, you have Luke, you have Leia, and you have Han Solo. Then you come over here and you see the Pez dispensers that I bought at uh, flea markets. Some loose Pez candy there. And these are my collectible, and for the most part, autograph. Lord of the Rings, and other DVDs. See, there's Dragon Ball Z with Christopher Sabat's autograph. He voiced Piccolo. There's Boston Legal Season 2 with uh, William Shatner's autograph as Danny Crane. Here's the first six Star Trek movies on VHS. And here is the collector's edition of the first ten Star Trek movies on DVD special extended scenes. Each of them have two discs, so they have behind-the-scenes interviews and everything. Let me just take the price tag off. There we go. That's a better look without the price tag on it. This uh, DVD set was produced around 2001. And of course, if you slowly pan across the other bolt, you'll see that I already have showing you most everything that's on these shelves, including the visionary shelf here. So then I'll show you what else I brought to the room today. So you have the Power of the Force Boba Fett figure. This is from 1995. And if you look at the back of it, you can see the other power, his whole biography. Well, stats anyway. You can see the other figures that they had at the time. I had Han, I had Leia, and I had Obi-Wan. 
Now the 3PO and R2 I have, they look very similar to the 3PO and R2 on the shelf. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if that is them. And at Fan Expo, or maybe 80s Toy Con, I forget, I bought some collector cases, just plastic ones that you can assemble. But I realized that they are the perfect size to have the two um, Motu Hot Wheels on top of each other. I'm just going to shut the curtains, turn on the lights, and I'll be right back. Yeah, that's better. You can see the, uh, the Motu Hot Wheels much better now. And if you look at the card backs, which you should be able to see most of, so the bottom one is Skeletor, there he is, top one's He-Man. I also have Tila, she's in the next one. Tila's right here. And there is the new Wind Raider. Now let's take a look at the card back of that one. See, it doesn't show what others come in the set. And then you have the Battle Ram here, and Wind Raider, but that's a slightly older one with different card art. If you look, you'll see, see, there we go. And this one has card art on the back. Its copyright date is... 2019, so not too long ago. But it's nice that it has a card art on the back anyway. And of course, you get a closer look at the uh, Empire Strikes Back Boba Fett figure. Let's see what date we have on the copyright date here. 2010. Oh my goodness, he's not even in a protective case. And yet he's already, well, 12 years old this year, right? Hmm. There's some of the figures. Huh. There we go. It's a good card. And then, of course, you have uh, Lando Calrissian here. So let's see what his uh, date is. Oh, he doesn't seem to have one, as far as I can tell. It's probably a newer one. But look, it's an eight, what they call an eight back, because you can see the other eight figures that come in the line. And of course, right now it's a Masters of the Universe corner, but I'm going to show you the shelf I bought that'll probably hold most of my Masters of the Universe Origins collection. Be right back. So don't mind the uh, the models on top of the shelf, but I bought the uh, five level shelf here. So it's 72 inches tall, which is about six feet. It's actually taller than I am. But there should be plenty of space for it to hold the figures and the vehicles. And of course, on the very top shelf, to cap it off, I would probably have the Origins Castle Grayskull. But I mean, there there is another another idea I have. Like there there is another shelf at home that I have. It's wooden. It's uh, it's not like this. It has a backing and it has four levels. And it's a bit wider than this one and a bit taller. It's it's almost the same height as this shelf here, actually. It's just bigger like that one. And I figure that wooden one will probably be the origin shelf because I will use the other one as my uh, model building shelf. So just take a slow circuit around the perimeter of the toy room. I, I put everything against the walls. Make sure to do that. That way, uh, 
when they move the deck furniture in here, you know, which will be more of a display shelf for, oh, I don't know, maybe carded figures. That should work out just fine. So there, I'm back against the door as far as back as I could get in the corner. And you can see just how much room there still is in this room. So if it, if it ended up becoming a guest bedroom, you'd still have room for the bed frame and the uh, a bedside table or two. But anyway, that's, uh, that's all for now. Talk to you all later for part four, which I'll probably end up filming on Wednesday, February 2nd, because Tuesday, February 1st, I'll be busy with the movers, both out of my old place and into this new place, so. And I'm spending all of the second waiting for the internet person anyway, so that'll give me plenty of time to set everything up and do a proper uh, toy room video. So talk to you all later. See you for part four, and hope you're enjoying your weekend.